Okay, so we're going to look at the second part of our notes for section 3.2. And this is going to have to do with solving an equation um, when we are going to get imaginary solutions on that equation. So we've already done this part. So go to this problem right here where it says Bay 2. Starting off kind of easy here with how do we solve this? If you had done this on the um, 3.1 homework, you would have actually said no, no solution, no real solution. But now we will always have a solution to a quadratic because here's what we would do. We would subtract nine from both sides and we get X squared equals negative nine. Like I said, in section 3.1, we would have tried to take the square root and we can't take the square root of a negative. So we would have said no solution. Well, now we know that we can give this a name. And what's the name that we're gonna give that solution then? What's the square root of negative nine? Three I, and what do I have to put in front if I have an equation? Plus or minus. So the answer to this is gonna be plus or minus three I. Anytime we have an equation and we take a square root, it has to be plus or minus. All right, over here, X squared plus 20 equals zero. We have to subtract 20 from both sides. We have x squared equals negative 20. We take the square root of both sides. We have to put plus or minus. Can you think of how that would simplify, Rachel? Uh, Did you guys understand why that would be 2i radical 5? That's because this is four times five and the square root of four is two. We have the I and then we have left inside the radical five. Okay, so we're just going one step beyond what we did before. Before we just stopped with the simplifying, but now we're solving an equation. All right. We're gonna have to scroll to down here, where it says day two. Okay, we're gonna solve this equation. Um, tell me the first step. Avery, what do you wanna do? Okay, we can divide by five. It's an equation. If it's an equation, we're allowed to divide. I like it, good idea. All right, what do you wanna do next? Uh, let's go with you, Brennan, what do you wanna do? What do you mean? You want me to subtract five or subtract X squared? Both are right, just choose one. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract five from both sides. So I have negative five equals X squared. What do I do now? Take the, everybody, Here. square root. So now I can just go ahead, I'm gonna put the X over here. What do I have to put in front of this? Plus. Plus or minus, and then what? I radical five. I want you to take a look at this right here, where I have X squared plus five equals zero. I want you to look at Y equals, you don't have to put this in, just watch, I'm going to. X squared plus five is what we got at this point. Look at what, how this graph is. Wouldn't you know that that's a parabola that's been shifted up five units? Is there anywhere that this equals zero? No, and that's why there's no real solutions, but there are only imaginary solutions on that. What about if I made it so it was minus five? Well, we have X intercepts if I make it minus five. Yeah, so now when I have minus five, it's down here, and how many X intercepts? And how many real solutions then? Two. Okay, we're gonna to get to that in a minute as well. Solve this one on your own. I'll be doing it up here if you need help.
you get it? Any questions? All right. Number five. I like how well you guys work with fractions. It seems like you really don't have any fear of them. Like most of you, I think, to start this problem would subtract four thirds. You wouldn't have any difficulties with that. But I want to show you how you can clear fractions in an equation. For those of you who don't feel that comfortable with fractions, you can clear them. Remember how I said you can divide by any number if you have an equation? Well, you can also multiply by any number if you have an equation. What's the common denominator here if I have 3, 5, and 3? So I'm going to multiply this equation by 15. It doesn't change it, just like dividing an equation doesn't change it. So now when I multiply this, what's a third of 15? So now I have negative 5x squared equals, yep, can you do this one? 40. 20, nice. We can do 15 divided by 3 is 5 times 4 is 20. Very good. Okay, now I have some options. I can take my x squared to the right, or I can take my 20x squared to the left. I think I'm going to do that. I always like my x's on the left. It's a personal preference. It doesn't matter. So I have negative 25x squared equals 3. A little bit tougher here. What are we going to do now? Divide by negative 25. So I have x squared. Now here's the thing, guys. This negative can go anywhere. You can keep it where it is. You can put it here. You can put it there. It's all the same. I'm going to put it just in the front like this. And now I'm going to take the square root. Watch how this goes. I have to put plus or minus. Can I take the square root of negative 1? Uh, I, so I have an I. Can I take the square root of 3? No, keep it there. Can I take the square root of 25? So do it. As long as you just follow the rules of algebra, it's okay. Just take the square root of every factor in there. Questions? All right, last couple things here. Sketch a graph of a function that has two real zeros at negative 2 and 2. Then sketch a graph on the same grid of a function that has two imaginary zeros of negative 2i and positive 2i. What's the difference? Think about that for about 30 seconds and see if you have any ideas at all. You can talk to your partner if you want to. I'd like to even know the names of those functions that make this happen. Can anybody think of the name of the function that has two real zeros, which means x-intercepts, at negative 2 and 2? Two? Just x squared? Okay, let's see. Let's graph that and see. Just x squared. We want it to have zeros or x-intercepts at negative 2 and 2. That didn't quite work, did it? That has an x-intercept of 0. I'm glad you at least tried, though. That's good. Anybody else have any ideas of how we can get those x-intercepts or those zeros at negative 2 and 2? What do you think, Ruth? Ben? You think? X squared minus 4. Let's see. Hmm, that looks good, doesn't it? Negative 2 and 2. That worked. How did you know that was going to work? Did you just guess and check? Or? Um, 
Okay. So if we have this um, X squared minus four, that's going to be a shift down four units. And if I go out one, I go up one. But if I go out two, I go up four. Remember that whole thing with the graphing? So that is going to work. Here's another way of thinking of it. If I want to have an answer of x equals negative 2, that means the factor had to have been x plus 2. If I want to have an answer of x equals 2, what was the factor? x minus 2. What do you get if you multiply that all out? x squared minus 4, okay? Ooh, that's really deep on that. But that's the way you can think of it. So here's going to be the f function that makes that work. All right, let's figure this out now. If I have a 0 of negative 2i, what could the factor have been? x plus 2i, right? And if I have a 0 of positive 2i, what would the factor have been? x minus 2i. Let's multiply this out together. x times x is x squared. What would happen with the outers and inners if I had an x times negative 2i and an x times positive 2i? What would happen with those? Cancel out. What's positive 2i times negative 2i? Negative 4i squared. Do you remember what i squared is? So this would be then negative 4 times negative 1. So what would that become then? Plus 4. Doesn't that make sense if I shift up 4 units? That's going to be a function that's going to have two imaginary zeros. Remember how we said that? Okay, tough problem there. All right, guys, we're going to see if anybody can figure this out. You might want to look back at your e earlier notes to figure out what was i to the sixth and what was i to the third. We never want exponents on our i's, if you can get it. Raise your hand if you can see it right I got my three people. Good job. That was pretty fast. How did they get that so quickly? Did anybody look back and see? Hi. Hey, hi. So you're like working so off. Okay. <laughs> so how did you guys get that I to the six so quickly? What did you do to get it? Did you look back at that pattern? Remember how it goes i, negative 1, negative i, 1? So what was i to the 6 then? That was negative 1, wasn't it? So what is 2 times i to the 6 going to be then? Negative 2. And then we have 2 minus, and then what's i cubed going to be? Negative i. So what's this going to end up being then if I have negative 3 times negative i, what would that end up being then? Just positive 3i. Okay, so what's this then? 2, and then I have to multiply it by 2 plus 3i. So what's that going to end up giving us then? 4 plus 6i. Am I allowed to simplify this by just dividing by 2 and making it? No, 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 because it's not a what? Equation. You can give me this answer. 
or you could give me this answer, but you can't just go and divide it or else it changes its value. But this is a good answer. All right, guys, great job today. That was a lot of learning, so very good.